Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and this is the second in a series of custom videos for V. Now, you might hear the wind outside. It's whipping like crazy. Super weird day. Anyway, it's going to be a windy video. All right, so in video one, we looked at his transition from a mere mortal into a watch enthusiast. If you haven't seen that video, link in the description, check it out. But as we left it, he had just gotten his first Rolex, a 116-234. That's a 36 millimeter date just. And he bought it around 2014, wore it for five years or so, and then sold it. Here it is, it's 2019. He's got some money and this is what he does. All right, let me just start right off in the middle of his email. In July 2019, I walked into my local Rolex AD and started to get to know some of the staff and built a rapport with one of the salespeople. It was December 2019 and I was offered the Sea Dweller 43 two-tone. That's reference 126603. I bought it on the spot without hesitation. All right, so December 2019, he buys his second piece, and this is after he established a relationship at an authorized dealer. Now, keep in mind, he's already said that he's got basically five Rolex watches, as we'll see, and one tutor. Now, in the next part, I take issue with one word. All right, and by the way, this is the first of those pieces, all right? And so see if you can spot the word. Throughout 2020, I have been slowly acquiring new pieces and have been able to purchase some of these at the AD and some of these from Luxury Bazaar, which is Roman Scharf's business. The pieces I've acquired in 2020 are as follows. All right, did you catch the word? It's right here. Throughout 2020, I have been slowly acquiring new pieces. Slowly, I mean, you're talking a year and we're gonna see five pieces. So that's something I'm definitely gonna bring up, the pace at which he's acquired these pieces. And I'll just tell you right now, I think he needs to slow down. What's the rush, man? Come on, all right? But anyway, let's get into it. So. We mentioned the Sea Dweller 43 two-tone, and he writes here about it. The first watch from this particular AD in December 2019, brand new box and papers. All right, so he's got a two-tone piece, dive watch. Number two, Rolex Submariner Date, and that's a 40 millimeter piece. That's the 116610LN, the recently discontinued 40 millimeter ceramic date sub. He purchased this January 2020 from a reputable dealer on Chrono 24. As I did not want to wait months and months for the AD, I paid very slightly over a list. The watch was authenticated at another AD, not his usual AD. He probably didn't want to take it there because, uh, well, he would be exposed for going behind their back. And it checked out. Brand new box and papers, new unworn. All right, so first piece, December 2019, a month later, he bought a sub, all right? And he couldn't wait a couple months at his AD, so he had to go and pay over list on Chrono 24. What's the freaking rush, man, all right? Um, let's continue. Now, he didn't give me timestamps for the others, but here it is, it's January 2020, and he adds all of these pieces within this year. Slow my ass, man! Uh, again, what's the rush? But anyway, okay, let me get into it. Next piece, a Rolex GMT Master II Rose Gold and Steel. Reference 126711 CHNR. That's the ceramic root beer two-tone. I asked the AD for this and was told uh, it could be almost a year to obtain I did not have the patience to wait for the AD, so bought from Luxury Bazaar for under 16000 at the time. Um, Jesus, I mean, again, I, I asked this question because I don't know what is the rush, all right? Interestingly, the prices on these 
on Chrono 24 are around 19 to 20 USD now. Okay, so they've gone up a little bit as per Chrono 24 prices on there are inflated. I think he's probably trying to justify paying a little over retail, all right? Because he got his panties in a bunch and he just couldn't wait for his AD to get it, all right? Brand new box and papers, all right? Next piece, by the way, that's another two-tone piece, all right? Um, the next piece is another two-tone piece. A Rolex Sky Dweller 42 millimeter oyster steel and yellow gold reference 326933. I asked for this from the AD, but again, as supply seemed to be somewhat limited and I'd have to wait for this watch, I simply bought it from Luxury Bazaar for a price that was actually around list. And then he goes on to the next piece, and this is a, a steel, I would call this sort of a high-end um, beater, all right? Tudor Heritage Black Bay with red bezel, all right? And he's got the reference number. That's it right there. Bought from the AD. Well, finally, you patronized your AD. Great. All right, good for you. Uh, it was actually in stock, bought on the spot with a fair discount, brand new box and papers. And then his last piece is this, a Rolex Day Date. 36 millimeter white gold with diamond hour markers. Reference 128239. I asked for this particular model and they had it in stock as they would. It's a it's a precious metal solid gold 36 millimeter, I think. Yeah, I don't know if it's, yeah, it is 36 millimeter. Date just, and it's got a diamond dial. So yeah, they would probably have that in stock, uh, but it was at a different location. Bought it the same afternoon, brand new box and papers. Okay. So, um, he says, that is my current collection and comprises the above-mentioned Tudor and Fort Rolex models. Well, I'm counting here five Rolex models, okay? Um, the Sea Dweller, the Submariner, the GMT Master II, the Sky Dweller, and the 36 millimeter uh, Day Date. That's five Rolex pieces. And the one Tudor. And look, he got all of these pieces in about a year. And so it goes to the question, what's a good pace of acquisition? This is too fast, this is too much. Now, if these were pre-ceramic pieces, I would understand it a little bit more because pre-ceramic pieces, the prices have crystallized and they're just going up. So if you wait a year, you're gonna be paying more, all right? But here he's talking modern pieces a lot of two-tone pieces and he had a relationship with an AD and he just couldn't wait. Now, the AD was saying a couple months, maybe a year. Now, I think, and this is subjective, let me know what you guys think, but I think one piece a year is fine enough. Now, I get it. If you're going pre-ceramic or vintage, you think those prices are going up and you know exactly what you want and you have it on your list, I can, I can understand going and buying those pieces up. But again, we're not talking pre-ceramic pieces. We're talking pieces that he could get at the AD. And I think that's what he should have done. I think he developed this relationship with the AD and he should have supported them. And the timeline that they were going to work with them with a, a couple months or a year would have been fine. And he could have, he could have, continue that relationship and gain cred at that AD, but he didn't. He just couldn't wait, and I don't get why. So I think that was a bad move, and I think paying over list is a bad move. He never mentions how much. I think he's downplaying it. I probably think he, uh, he paid a little bit over, but he didn't need to if you just calm down. So that's really what I take away here. Somebody that just went overboard too much, too fast, you know, uh, I don't think I would have done that. Let's look at the actual pieces, all right? Now, he's got, of course, uh, quite a few two-tone pieces. Now, I think he's got too many two-tone pieces. In fact, he's got only two steel stunners, and that's the 40 millimeter date sub, that ceramic date sub, and the Tudor. And... Uh, okay, well, I guess he likes two-tone watches. I think I would have gone a little less on the two-tone. But again, that's a, that's a personal choice here. But 
you've got, and, and I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, and this is kind of useful. You've got what I, what I call, and I'm going to make a separate video about this, green Rolexes, you've got red Rolexes, you've got white Rolexes. What am I talking about? I'm talking about watches, um, Rolex watches, that when you get them, you're in the green, all right? That would be the steel professional model Rolexes. I'm talking the Daytona, the steel Sky Dweller, Submariners, all right, steel sports professional models, all right, generally it's the steel models. And when you get one of those, you're in the green, meaning you walk out the door, you pay less than what it's going for on the free market, all right? You can make money, you can, you can be well into the green within an hour, all right? And it's, you know, it puts the AD in the green as well because they can bundle those pieces with lesser pieces, uh, they can require uh, you to get those uh, lesser pieces, two-tone pieces, diamond dial pieces, uh, to get those pieces, and they can hold those for their VIPs, which are going to help them out. So they use those in a way to stay in the green. Now, the opposite is the red Rolexes, and you buy one of those, you walk out the store, you're in the red, all right? Uh, the two-tone uh, Diamond Dial Datejust is a great example of that. A lot of ladies' pieces. But you walk out, and if you sell it, you're going to take a hit. All right, you're in the red. And having those in the case, the AD is in the red, and they want to get rid of them. And before I go on to the next point, let me just say the there's probably a few that I would say are white, and they're just kind of, um, they're sort of neutral, all right? And I would say his very first piece, the two-tone 43-millimeter Sea Dweller, is um, it, it's right, it's a neutral piece, is, is what I would call a white Rolex, in the sense that it's not really going to lose money, it's not going to make money. Um, if he wants to get out of that, he may make a bet or lose a bet. It's going to be pretty much breaking even, okay? And again, he's got a lot of two-tone pieces, so he's got a lot of red Rolexes, in my opinion. Now, they are sports models, all right? But I think he's in the red with the AD, all right? Meaning the AD thus far has gotten a better deal. So my point in saying that is that the your AD owes you, all right? And they especially owe you because of this. Let me continue on. Separately, as my mother was turning a milestone in age 70, I bought her a Rolex two-tone date, just 34 millimeter with Everose gold and diamonds at list brand new box papers, same AD. So you're definitely in the red with that piece. If they didn't owe you before, they definitely owe you now. And um, and then he adds one more. My wedding anniversary was this year as well. So I bought my wife a hard to get Oyster Perpetual 36 millimeter, the pink dial, that's the candy pink dial. Beautiful dial, I love that watch. Um, I mean, I'm a guy, so society says I can't wear a pink watch, right? So. I can't, but a beautiful dial for a woman. So um, your wife's very lucky, and that's a, a great piece, um, which the AD just so happened to have in stock in the safe in the back. Brand new box and papers and the same AD. Now, that would be what I would call the slightly green uh, Rolex. Now, it's a continuum, okay? And so some Rolexes are greener than others, some are redder than others. Um, your mom's watch, that's hella red, all right? Your wife's watch, that's a pale shade of green, meaning, um, you know, it's a, a, a woman's watch. Could a guy wear it? Yeah, a guy could wear it, but I don't think a lot of guys would wear it. Um, would guys flip it? Is it going for more? Probably, probably not that much more. It's 36 instead of the 41, and it's, it's kind of a break-even piece, all right? But if you, if you factor in your mother's piece than um, those two ladies' pieces, you're in the red, all right? So, um, what do I think he should have done? Well, I think he should have waited. I think he should have fostered that relationship. I think he should have got all those two-tone pieces um, from his AD, and that would have helped him do what he wants to do. And what he wants to do is something we're gonna tackle in the next video, video three. Now, as far as the actual pieces go, again, a lot of two-tone pieces, and when it comes to assessing a piece, personally, I look at five bits of criteria, all right? Form, function, 
value, wearability, and X factor, all right? And so let's just think about wearability. Now, we often talk about wearability in terms of, you know, the watch versus the world, the environment. Can it go on a mountain, in the water, in the sea? Can it, can it handle dust and perspiration and sweat and all manner of liquids? All of your watches can. They're oysters, all right? But we often don't talk about the socio- horological aspect of a watch and that means how it functions in society all right because we are social beings and social creatures and we don't live on an island we we function in society and so how does how does that watch function among other people all right how does it how does it work and i would say that two tone pieces in a socio horological setting function less well than steel pieces, all right? Because they're, they're eye-catching, they're ostentatious, um, they, they look blingy, they bring attention to you, uh, they could make you a target. And in that sense, they are, in my opinion, not as wearable. Now, this is an interesting sort of angle because uh, something like a steel sub with a rotating bezel and the Cyclops is arguably, by this logic, less wearable, right, um, in a sociohorological setting than a 36 millimeter Oyster Perpetual. And I'm willing to grant that that's the case and, and assert that. So let me know what you think. But my whole point in saying this is that he's got a lot of two-tone pieces, and so I don't know how wearable they are. I mean, I wouldn't want to travel with these to certain countries because really going to make you a target. So I think you're heavy on the two tones. And look, the Rolex Day Date is white gold. So that's kind of nice, but it's got a diamond dial. All right. And my guess is it has a Jubilee bracelet and a fluted bezel, I'm guessing. So yeah, but again, it might fly under the radar a little bit. If it didn't have that diamond dial, probably a little bit more. But with that Sky Dweller and the GMT uh, ceramic root beer, um, and the and the sea dweller, those are three two tone pieces. So, um, I think you really, I think your best piece. Well, I don't want to say it's your best piece. I'm not going to say that it's my favorite piece, though. Of course, would be the Rolex Submariner Date 40 millimeter, the ceramic date sub. You guys know that I like those kind of watches, but that's going to be really wearable, all right. And that and the Tudor, but of course the Tudor, it's a high end beater. Um, you know, it just doesn't have the X factor that the Rolex has. But, you know, you've got your dive watches, you've got your steel dive watch, you've got your two-tone 43 millimeter dive watch when you go down into the, uh, you know, helium, whatever, what are those things called? Saturation diving, that's it. Uh, you're, you're all set to saturation dive, yes, the, um, but you've got your your dive watches and you've got a third dive watch with uh, Tudor, which again, he's probably using as a high-end beater, that's the way I would use it. Um, and then he's got his two GMT watches, his kind of fancy, they're both fancy because they're two-tone, but he's got the GMT Master 2 and he's got the, you know, Sky Dweller and they're both two-tone. One of those should be steel, all right? That would be more balanced. And then he's got the uh, Day Date, which uh, is a dress watch. Um, but again, it's got diamonds on the dial. I think diamonds on the dial are gaudy, all right? And so, yeah, a lot of people would say that's a, a dress watch and you could wear it with a suit, and you could, but you're talking used car salesman uh, persona kind of stuff. So there we have it. We're gonna get into what he wants to get in the next video. Let me know what you think. Let V know what you think. I think he should have bought these at the AD. I think he should have slowed down one a year, all right? and uh, should have fostered that uh, relationship with an AD. Tone down on the two tones. That's what I say going forward, absolutely. Don't get any more precious metal with two tone watches, okay, I'll say that. What do you guys think he should get, all right? What do you think he wants? What do you think he should get? And look, uh, he's in the red with that AD. What should he ask him for, all right? He's gotta, he's gotta get back in the green and they gotta pay up, all right? Because he spent some money there. Let me know what you think. Take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.